Hi, so this is my video report number six. So we know that some of the typical patterns that often cause difficulty in groups are that the group tends to put subtle and not so subtle pressures um, on the individuals to both self-disclose, take risks, uh, confront and share their feelings honestly. So these pressures then can cause feelings of inadequacy, anxiety, shame and guilt. So in that way, the learners will try and avoid the, these feelings and pressures. So there will likely be avoidance behavior and this will be unconscious. So some also have a fight or flight response. Um, so flight would be retreating from the situation and fight would be um, attacking others. And some might also have pairing behavior. So that would be when an individual lobbies uh, for support, believing that there is more safety in numbers. So in terms of number two, so blocking is basically when you're in a group and there's arguing on a, on a topic or a point for too long or someone rejects the ideas without consideration, talking about personal experiences that are not related to the topic or the group, or even like getting off of the group's process. Um, a strategy that we can use in terms of blocking is when the individuals that's blocking is stops talking or pauses for a bit, we can take over and intervene and try and change the subject. So in terms of competing, competing is when there's someone in the group that tries to gain favor, vibes with the leader for power, talks the most and plays the most role. So in that situation, a strategy that we can use in terms of competing would be opening up the floor for more people to engage and participate. Um, so just saying something like, I would like to hear some of the other's ideas on this. So horsing around is when, and it is very like obvious in the group, it's when Someone in the group is joking around and being the clown of the group, relentless horsing around that is not occasional, so they're doing it all the time. A strategy that we can use in terms of horsing around would be um, identifying the issue and presenting it. We can ask what is going on and if we can get back onto the topic to help focus the participants back onto what was being talked about. So foreclosing is basically trying to cut off the decision without actually knowing if the problem is solved. So they will assume that the problem is solved before the consensus is reached. So a strategy that we can use in terms of foreclosing would be making sure that everyone is in agreement by asking if everyone has reached agreement um, on this or do we have to revisit or discuss more about the topic that's being talked about. So minimizing is assuming that the problem is not important. Uh, so they'll be trying to push it away. A strategy that we can use in terms of minimizing is asking what the situation means to everyone in the group um, to let us know if we should move on to a different topic or to stay on the current one. So the coach needs to keep in mind the dynamics of both helpful and hindering behavior um, in order to accomplish the individual and the group's goals. So it should be pointed out and dealt with with the affected member of the group. So how will I accomplish this in that situation? Would it be um, ensuring that everyone has a voice and everyone, not everybody is the same. So everyone reacts and acts differently in different situations and different ways. So having a more serene approach and using positive reinforcement, um, I will also be able to support those who tend to think more negatively or don't have that much motivation by being optimistic and reinforcing that motivation factor for them. Um, it is important that I also have intending behavior and be able to carefully examine the behavior in the room. So for initiating, um, initiating is proposing solutions and new ideas, suggesting ways to organize information or a new definition of the problem. So my plan to reinforce um, initiating in the group is trying to add new ideas and meanings into the situation. For example, I could say something like, um, I'm sensing that we haven't really considered this part of the problem. So coordinating would be pulling ideas together, uh, showing relationships between ideas or suggestions. So my plan to reinforce coordinating um, in the group would be implementing everyone's ideas or, contribu or contributions and then making it um, a big idea, showing that each idea is important uh, and contributes to the end result. So I could say something like, your suggestion to this issue would be perhaps as valuable as theirs. Uh, because both both suggestions involve what is being talked about. 
So gatekeeping would be making sure that everyone has an equal chance to speak. So limited amount of time for each person so that everyone has a chance to voice their opinion. So my plan to reinforce this would be stopping the group at times and ask something like, for example, I'd like to hear others view on this. And if I see that there's anyone who hasn't spoken yet and wants to share, like now is your time and you can and you can voice your opinion. So expressing group feeling is basically summarizing the group feeling, describing the group's reaction to ideas or solutions. So my plan to reinforce the expressing of group feeling in the group would be letting the group share their feelings towards certain issue and then summarize them all. So for example, I could say something like, um, my sense is that we all feel vulnerable um, towards this current global pandemic, for example. And testing for consensus would be asking the group for their opinion if they're nearing consensus on a decision, also worded as trial balloons, uh, to test the group opinions. So my plan to reinforce this testing for consensus in a group would be when I see that the group is near coming to a conclusion or going on to the next step of their tasks, I would ask something like, for example, I would ask, are we ready to accept solution C? So that would tell me if um, a consensus is made and if we can move on to the next step of our process.